Okay, so now we have a quick example by looking at normal distribution and what we will do is use a normal distribution to determine the probability. So let's read the question slowly. We're told the highest temperature for July is described by a normal distribution with an average of 95 Fahrenheit. So it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 2.5 Fahrenheit. The average is 95, the standard deviation is 2.5 for July, essentially in the summer. So we're told the probability that the high temperature will be between 90 Fahrenheit and 98 Fahrenheit is most nearly what? So this type of question is normal distribution, but the key word here is between, right? We do not see greater than or less than, we see between. So we have a region that we're gonna focus on between 90 Fahrenheit to 98 Fahrenheit. What is that probability of occurring using normal distribution? So that's what we wanna find. So let's state that as what we wanna find. And the way this is denoted using the probability function is essentially P stands for probability. And what we're gonna say is we're gonna go from 90 degrees and it's gonna be less than or equal to the x value and then we have 98 degrees with respect to the x value it's gonna be what less than or equal to so sorry greater than or equal to essentially it's just the range of 90 to 98 so this is our range and between right between 90 and 98 and that's what we want to find this is the question at hand so for what we're given is going to be the two values essentially the average and the standard deviation right so let's write that as a given so the average is I'll denote it as mu it's essentially the population average the total average so I'll denote that as mu given that certain sample size here we're not told the sample size but let's assume it's a high sample size so we'll denote it by mu for the population average to be 95 degrees Fahrenheit and we're also given the standard deviation which is Sigma right Sigma is the standard deviation this variable is 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit okay so we have those as a given and we want to find the probability that we will have 90 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit so what I'm going to do first for the solution is draw a normal distribution curve and denote those values. And what we're going to actually do is do the standard normal distribution curve. So remember, we usually, anytime we analyze a normal distribution, we apply the standardized type, right? Which employs what? z-scores so anytime you hear standard we're gonna employ those z-scores so let's just draw that normal distribution curve so we have a curve that looks something like this well it, it should be symmetric so just know that a normal distribution curve is always symmetric okay so we have that and we know at the middle is going to be the average, which is the population, right? So this is our mu, and that equals to 95. And we know that at this mu, essentially we have that standard deviation, I'll just write that of 2.5. So this is the population, but we know for a standard curve that mu is essentially denote it using z-scores as x so at the middle it's always going to be zero using the z-score scale right that equals to zero and we can prove that by doing a z-score calculation but i won't go into that just know using the z-score scale x which is essentially similar to the z-scores is zero at the middle at the average then what we're going to plot is the 90 degree z-score and the 98 degree z-score on this plot right so let's do that on the side here let's do first the 90 degree z-score 
So the z-score equation, I'll actually write it on the left on this side, is going to be always the x, so the val value we're going to analyze is essentially 90, and we're going to compare it to what? The total population standard deviation of 95. Minus mu, so x minus mu, divided by the standard deviation. So this is the z-score when we're using normal distribution. So let's find the values for 90 degree and 98 degree, the z-scores. So I'll just denote that here, z-scores. So for z 90 degree Fahrenheit, it's going to equal to x. So our x value, lowercase x, is the 90 degree, right? We plug in 90 minus mu is going to be the population which is 95 divided by the standard deviation which is 2.5 and for that which is the 90 degrees we get about negative 2.0 keep that negative so keep that negative it's negative right so now let's do the other value which is 98 because we're concerned with 90 and 98 and that region so we need the 98 one so 98 degrees Fahrenheit equals to so we plug in 98 minus 95 divided by 2.5 so for that you should get 1.2 so we have the z-scores right and we plot the z-scores let's do it down here right again at the middle the z-score is always zero since we start at zero so let's plot the 90 degree one so for 90 degree we know it's about negative 2 and I'm going to assume negative 2 is going to be to the left, right? So to the right is positive. We start at 0. To the right is positive. To the left is negative. So we're going to go for essentially the 90 degree Fahrenheit, which is to the left of 95. It makes sense. Below, right? To the left. And we're going to have a z-score down here of what? Negative 2. So negative 2. Point zero. So we have that. Now let's plot the 98. The, so the 98 is 1.2. So I'm just going to assume it's somewhere here to the right because it's positive. And that value is at 98 degrees Fahrenheit for that 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And the z-score, let's plot that down here. And we get that to be the 1.2, right? Okay, so now we have the z-scores, and at the end, what we just want to do is find the area to find the probability. And we can use tables, right? We don't have to do that calculus stuff, but we know we can use tables that are provided in the handbook. But the area that I'm concerned with, since we're told between, between 90 Fahrenheit and 98 Fahrenheit, is going to be between 90 and 98, is this region right this is the area that we want this is the area that we want and this will give us that probability will give us the probability so I'll just write it again that we will have between 90 and 98 this region so now the question that comes up is how do we find this area this area in red dashed red to find that probability so what we're going to do is actually use the tables provided in the handbook to find the areas. And it's not so simple in this case because we want this middle region, right? So what we're going to do and what I'm going to propose is to find a total area and subtract another respective total area. And the way this would look, what we're going to do, so I'll draw again our same curve. So we're going to say that we're going to take a total curve here and we're gonna find the area up to 1.2 so essentially we're gonna go all the way up to 1.2 so let's say we have 1.2 here and we're gonna find that total area so I'll denote that area in red total area so the whole thing that's what we're gonna do first so we're gonna take that value and what we're gonna do is essentially 
take the whole value and subtract it from what area? From what area can we subtract it from? It's going to be this little area. So we need to subtract it from that little area. So if you can imagine it, you would take this total area. Let me actually use this. You take the total area here in yellow. You take that, which is what we're going to find here, right? That total area. Then we subtract this area off, this little area at the end off. And then we're left with what? We're left with just this area, right? Which is what we're looking for. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that total area, subtract that little area at the end in red, and we get what we want, the area in the middle region. So we take that total area, then we're going to say minus, I'll draw this again, minus this little area. And just denote that that little area is the negative 2, right? The negative 2.0. So I'll use green there, this little area at the end. And then we will get, so for the sake of completion, I'll just draw again what we had up here, right? So you have the negative 2.0, then you had the, the 1.2. And then we get the area in between. Get this area. And that's what we want, right? So let's first find this area. And we're going to use those tables. So for 1.2, we know this is the z-score, right? For this curve, the z-score, it was at what temperature? It was the 1.2, so it was at 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was at 98 degrees Fahrenheit equals to 1.2 right so this is the z-score and we're going to use the tables so the tables are provided on page 76 in the new FE handbook and just to know I brought in just two columns here and these are the two you will heavily focus on and you really don't need all of what you're given in the handbook some people just use even just one just the positive z-score but we know I'll just use both of these here so in this case, we know this column, the x column, is simply the z-score. So this column will be what we plot as the z-score. So it's denoted by x, but just know that's the z-score. And we know the first column, just note how this curve goes beyond the middle line, right? So this says it's going to be reading everything to the left, right? And for this, you're mostly concerned about positive z-scores because it's going to be to the right think of this as 1.2 or 1 then we have positive 2 positive 3 and so on so we're concerned with positive values in this case then this column it's the rx think of this as forward function this is as the reverse this is when we're concerned with negative z-scores most importantly when we have the ints when we use this so this, think of this as 0, think of this as negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So this is how I like to think about it. But again, you can just use this one and play around with subtraction and so on. But let's focus first on this question. So let's do the 1.2. It's a positive value. And just note, the handbook gives us data for positive values, right, for the z-scores. So what we're going to do, since it's a positive value, let's use the fx. So we're going to go up to what? We're going essentially up to 1.2, right? So we go up to 1.2, we go down, we plot 1.2 here, and we get this value, right? So this is for 1.2. So let's write that down. That probability under the curve, I'll call it fx, equals to about 0. 0.8849 so we have that now we need the end now we need that end so the way you can simply get the end real quick well actually sorry you need the negative 2 so it's the negative 2 right you can't use the 1.2 
So that end is at negative 2, right? So the negative 2. So we have a negative value in that case. So we know we have a negative value. And it's going to be, these are all for positive z-scores, right? Positive z-scores. So this value is actually reading this whole region up to 2, right? We read it up to 2 here. Like it goes all the way like that. It's the whole area. But we know we only need the end. We essentially just need this portion. So what we can do is just quickly go to this, right? Because this reads negative values. And what we're going to say is this is 0. This will be, let's say, negative 2. So this is the reverse, right? So that's going to be negative 2. So we just go on this column. So you go to 2. But in this case, it's going to be negative. Or it's the same process. It's taking this minus 1. Or 1 minus 0 0.9772. It gives you this, right? Because we're taking this whole area and finding it for 2, right? For a value of 2. Then to get this little region, what do we do? We know the total probability is 1. So we take 1 minus this whole region. And it gives us this little int. So you can do that with positive z-scores. But let's just use what we have for the r, for the reverse. And for that, it's going to be negative 2, right? So you go down. You go to the 2. But make sure you use this column for rx. So you go to 2 and use this value. So that's going to be that value 0 0.0228. So that value... For, so it was a, a z-score for what, for what temperature there? 90, right? This was for 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was negative 2. And we take Rx, and we get, for that one, 0 0.0228. So now we have the Fx, we have this value, and all we do is simply take this, minus this, this whole region, minus this whole region, and it leaves us with what? This, right? Take this whole region minus this little region green. And it leaves us with this. And that's going to be the answer. So here we take... I'll just write that down here. The probability that we're going to be between 90 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit is going to equal to this value. 0.884 9 minus this value, which is 0 0.0228. Then we can do the math there, and we get about 0 0.8621. So about 86%. So we have an 86% chance that we will be in the temperature of 90 to 98 degrees. So we have that value, and in this case, it should be A. And I think that's it. Thank you.